And today I'm just going to do a demonstration of just a simple apple, but I'm going to do it in uh, lots of bright colours, free flowing marks, um, just to give you an idea of, of one of the ways that you can build up your painting. Um, so let's get started. So I've just put out a few colours um, on my palette. Um, I've got the phthalo green sorry thalo blue green shade um and then i've got a thalo green which is the yellow shade i've got a cadmium yellow light a titanium white um, i've got a quinacridone magenta and a lizard crimson and these are all mm -hmm. the windsor and newton artist quality paints i'm using a liquitex freestyle brush which is, this is about two centimetres or two and a half centimetres. Mm. And, and then I'm just using some rosemary Shiraz brushes um, of different sizes. So I'm just doing this, obviously this simple apple. So you can use your palette knife to pre-mix up some colours. So I'm just going to make up a few pools of colour just so that I've got something to dip into as I'm painting without having to constantly mix along the way but I will also mix colours up as I go through so I'm just mixing up some of the quinacridone and the alizarin crimson I'm going to put a tiny little bit of white in just to bring out some of the vibrancy So I've got a little pot of water to add to the paints and I've got a pot of water to clean my brushes and, and I just have some paper towel just to dry it off. So to start with I'm just going to very lightly mark out the apple. So at this stage doesn't really need to be anything spectacular, just kind of a basic shape is fine. So you can do it as big. She might make that a little bit bigger. So I'm just marking out roughly where the shadows are, so. So with my freestyle brush, I'm just going to start painting in some of the shadows. So I'm just using my purple mix with the magenta and some of the blue. So this one I'm keeping quite loose, so just add a little bit of water. So. Clean out the brush. And then some of the alizarin crimson. So I'll just put the marks down and then I'm kind of just leaving them there. I'm not overworking them. Just keep it nice and loose. Bring in a little bit of the, if you can see this, to the greys. So again, just just blocking these in roughly. So I'm laying down a few marks and then I'm leaving them and washing out my brush. I'm not, just because I've mixed up that colour, I'm not going to try and overwork it too much. 
So I'm going to start to put in a few lighter bits. I'm going to put in some greens, I think. So notice how I'm moving the brush around. I'm not doing it in just one kind of d uh, direction. I am trying to add a little bit of interest. So it's good when you start to use a nice wide brush to stop you from being too detailed. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of this, this blue colour. Again, just to build up a little bit more depth in places. You know, feel free to put a mark here and there elsewhere as well. So you could do it a little bit more watered down if you want to. So when we go on to put the background, we can blend that in a little bit. Might even add a little bit of white to that. So at the moment, it doesn't really resemble much like an apple, but that's fine. That will all come in later. So I'm going to mix up a bit more of the red and the magenta. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. So I'm not bothered that it's look, looking a bit of a mess at the moment. Most of my paintings sort of start off that way, but I'm fine with that. So I just put that in just to give you an idea of where that's going to go. You've noticed I'm working on paper uh, which I stretched using gum tape. The reason being, if you're unsure, is because paper tends to curl when you add too much water, even if it is artist quality like this. Um, so it is good to pre stretch it. So I'm just mixing up a bit of the, the yellow and the green. So Notice how when you start to put the brights on amongst all these sort of pre-mixes, all these mixed colours, as you start to get a little bit of vibrancy in there. So I'm just going to move over to a, a slightly smaller brush, or rather quite a substantially smaller brush. Um, um, when you're doing it as well, it's good to just to um, dry off your painting as well so that you don't end up mixing the colours in too much. So we'll start to bring the shape of the apple in once I, once I do the background, but you want to keep the marks moving almost out of the apple so that when you work around it, you can clip it in. Um, you don't want a mark to suddenly stop and look too contrived, so just carry it out if you can. So I'm just going to add in some slightly brighter pinks here. Again, I put the, the stalk in, but it's okay if you take it out again. So. I'm just really moving the marks around a little bit. Bring in some of these darker greys again. So I'm, as you can see, I'm starting to make um, a bit of a mess here and there. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and I'm just going to dry this out with my hairdryer. 
Okay, so now that's nice and dry, I'm just going to start adding a little bit more, strengthening up some of the colour here and there. So the shadow I'm not too concerned about, I'm just roughly putting that in just to give you a little bit of an idea. See how lovely that green looks against all that colour? Some of you might disagree, but <laughs> I quite like it. So obviously these are quite unconventional apple colours, um, but that's the type of painting that I like to do. And So now we can start to get a little bit of the, um, the shape of the apple, the background. And then we can bring in more detail around here. So. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. some more white so because the apple is quite warm and I've used a lot of of the um, magenta I'm going to make the background more towards the blue green obviously with some greys in there So I'll put the colours in the background and then I'm kind of editing them out a bit. So you can leave bits of it showing if you want to. So I'm going to bring in some of the, the colour of the apple into the background a little bit. So I want to kind of blur the lines a bit between the, the apple and the, um, the background. So it's...
a little bit of interest. In fact, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit more yellowy. brush uh, which is a Shiraz round brush just to get a little bit of the stalk detailing in so I'm just mixing up the green and the magenta again Add a bit of depth to the bottom of the apple. So notice how I'm moving in the direction of the apple. So I'm moving around. I'm not. So you've you you so you get an, a sense of the apple, um, the shape of it. I'm just gonna add a bit more and some magenta and a bit of white. You don't get very many apples this colour, but hey ho, my apple is this colour. Add a little bit of the alizarin crimson just to give it a bit of warmth. Oh, that's nice. I'm starting to bring in some lovely, juicy colour now. Why not? I say, why not? A little bit of yellow. One funky looking apple. What else? Just a little touch here and there. 
I'm going to bring in some more white into the background. So I'm going to add almost like a bit of a wash just to just to calm it down a bit. I don't mind even if I go into the apple a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use maybe built a bit out. The shadow, I'm just keeping a bit loose. You know, I'm not worried about, you know, I know people will say that the shadow doesn't fall that way. I'm just doing it for stylized purposes. Uh, nothing more than that. Because let's face it, you don't get any apples this colour, do you? But hey ho. Just keeping. So now I'm just really just sort of playing around a little bit, just adding touches here and there just to spark a little bit of interest so you could go on for a while but that's kind of just my basic take on a on an apple uh, I hope you found that interesting please feel free to subscribe down below and I will send you more painting tutorials in the up and coming weeks